Hello Indian people, my name is Robert and in this video I'll explain all the different eToro fees. I'll use as an example stocks, ETFs and CFDs, but most fees also apply to cryptos and commodities. And obviously all information and calculations in this video are just for reference and based on my opinion, you should always check eToro's fees page as the fees change from time to time. The easiest fee to understand is the withdrawal fee of $5, which is charged every time you withdraw your money. Unless you invest more than $25,000 on eToro, then you don't have it, but I guess in that case you also don't care. Next we have currency conversion fees. eToro operates with dollars only, so when you deposit money from other currencies, they take a conversion fee. And the conversion fee depends on the payment method you choose and the currency. For example, when converting from pounds to US dollars, the fee for bank transfer is 50 pips, but PayPal is 150 pips. And what is a pip you might ask? Just to make it a bit more confusing, the conversion fee is calculated in pips. A pip for currency is 0.01%. Let me show you an example to clarify this. Let's say you've just found a thousand pounds lying on the ground. Now you deposit that money at 1.21 GBD to US dollar. So for one pound you get 1.21 dollars. If there were no fees while converting your thousand pounds, you should have about $1,210. On eToro, the deposit fee for GBD to USD is 50 pips, or in other words, 0.5%. So that's a half a percent. If you want to learn more about what pip means, I'll leave a link in the description. But all you need to know is that one pip is 0.0001. We take the conversion rate and subtract that with 50 pips. So we are left with 1.205. This means after the fees, you would have $1,205, which means there is a $5 fee. But again, this just depends on how much you convert. If you convert at $10,000, it'll be $50 in fees. And eToro will be sending you an email like this. Thank you. Your money is my money now. So what about euros? It really depends on the payment method. The cheapest is to use a wire transfer or online banking, which are specific to a country. Then the fee is 50 pips. And for other currencies, just check eToro's fees page. Now you could just deposit directly in dollars and sometimes it might make sense, but lately eToro conversion rate has been pretty decent. And to compare, you can simply start depositing money in eToro. You'll see it immediately here when you select bank transfer, you can see that you'll get $1,221. Then in transfer wise, you get $1,220 or that's actually 21. Then in Revolut, you get 1,225, almost 26. And in PayPal, you get 1,209. So this is the lowest. So if we compare all of those three together, You'll notice that the difference between the best one and the eToro is only $5. So if that's worth the hassle for you, then go for it. You can also try to deposit it directly from Revolut and then send the money to uh, as dollars to eToro. So before depositing or withdrawing your money, just double check where you can get the best conversion rate. Oh, by the way, remember that conversion fees will also apply when you withdraw the money. So this fee will be applied when you deposit and withdraw in other currency than US dollar. Now, you don't need to worry about the following fees if you're just copy trading because copy traders will handle everything for you, meaning when you see profits or losses on your account, that's what you're going to get. After withdrawal and currency conversion fees, obviously. Next, let's talk about spread fees. Now, the good news is that eToro doesn't have spread fees when you open a long non-leveraged position. In normal words, you buy a stock in the expectation that it will rise in value in the future. So this applies to most common stocks. But if you buy a CFD or you short, you will be charged the spread fee. Oh, by the way, to short sell any asset, you're assuming the stock will go down in price in the future. In that case, you will make money. Check the proper explanation and example for short selling in the quick video right here. So when you see sell in eToro, it doesn't mean you will close your existing trade, but actually you're short selling the asset. Also pay attention if the asset is a CFD or not. You can see that by clicking into any asset 
here on the top next to the asset name some of them have this cfd that's how you know so let's dive into the spread fees that's your stock and eToro spreads a thin layer of fees oh wait you wanted the proper explanation right Spread fees are usually like a markup that brokers add to the buy and sell prices you see on your screen. And it's really specific to what you want to trade. Commodities and currencies are in pips, whereas crypto coins are in percentages. Let's assume you're buying Apple stock at two time leverage. As mentioned, there is no spread fees if you don't use leverage. The spread fee for stocks is 0.09%. And you can see here the price changes when I switch from one to two. So what you see, the change here, that is that is spread fee. If you're selling or shorting the stock, then the spread fee is also applied, but you don't see the difference because here and here it's the same. So it's already applied to the price, but you can easily calculate it by just multiplying this number by 0 0.0009. And that will be the fee per stock. And I guess half of you are already doing this. Why are you running? Hey, if you find this video helpful and you decided to sign up with eToro, I would appreciate it if you used my link in the description to sign up as you will support this channel at no cost to you. Like most other trading platforms, eToro also charges overnight fees, which is basically a small fee for them to lend you the money to hold the item overnight. This again really depends on what you're trading. For example, if you trade stocks and you don't leverage them, then there are no overnight fees. If you do leverage, it means eToro is kind of lending you money, so they are collecting an interest rate on that. Here's a list of overnight fees for stocks. By the way, this is only for leverage and short positions. Let's say we have $1,000 investment in a US stock and the USD Libre for one month is 1.55%. And that means for the buy positions, you get about 22 cents of fees and for sell position, it's about 0.12 a day. So the overnight fees for US stock is 22 cents per day on buy and 12 cents per day on sell positions when you invest thousand dollars let's break down the buy position so you can understand how this works so the 6.4 percent is the eToro free and the 1.55 percent is usd liber for one month you're probably wondering what the heck is liber well it stands for london interbank offered rate what the hell are you yes yeah, sounds complicated but this is the interest rate at which banks borrow money to each other internationally. And it's one of the benchmark rates that indicates how much it costs to banks to borrow money. And it is constantly changing, so you have to look it up when you do the calculation. And 365 is the number of days in a year, and $1,000 is the investment. So in this case, you end up paying $0.22 cents for a day. And keep in mind that overnight fees are applied to the borrowed amount. So if you have $1,000 and you leverage it three times, which means you have $3,000, the fee is only applied to the $2,000 you borrowed. And you can always see the overnight fees in the pop-up when you buy or sell a position and when the overnight fees are applied. So the longer you wait, the more money goes to this guy. If you don't log in for 12 months to your account, you'll be charged a monthly inactivity fee of $10 per month until you run out of balance or you're, you log in. So don't forget to log in from time to time. If you want to know all the basic and hidden features eToro has to offer, check out this complete tutorial of eToro trading platform. I'll just show you around the platform and how to use all the features.